homily. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to FeastCon. By the way, I'd like to introduce to you my companion, uh, Reverend Edward. Can you stand? Reverend Edward Dantes, can you give him a hand? So it's his first time serving at the feast. Hinila ko siya. So in the same way ni mga may hinila kayo dito na hindi feasters, binudol nyo, anong sinabi nyo sa kanila para sumama? <laughs> diba? Alam ko na yan mga style na yan. Tapos eventually next year sila na yung mag-aaya. Amen? Amen. Amen. Diba? Alam niyo po, Ed is a deacon. That means he is on the last stage of becoming a priest. So the next level of that is ordination to priesthood. So in a few months, he will be a priest like me. Can you pray for him? Include him in your prayers. <laughs> Meanwhile, I am Father Albert. And last Thursday, November 17, I celebrated my fourth year as a priest. Bata pa. <laughs> Kung baga sa tao, toddler pa lang. Pagbigyan nyo na, marami pa naman akong baby fats, di ba? So, pwede pa naman. A toddler pa. Four years. And you know what? It was Thursday, November 17. And I had a grand plan. So, I spent the day with my community, the seminary, and then with my co-workers. And then, sabi ko sa sarili ko, the next day, November 18, I will be at the feast con. And I will have time to fill up my love tank. You know? I will listen to talks. I will... Um, Enjoy meeting people, feasters that perhaps some of you have only ministered to online during the pandemic, but now we can finally see each other and so on. And Shepi sabi ko, I also want to serve. No, so I, other than this mass, I ask, um, can I volunteer for confession? And so the liturgy team told me, okay, Father, there are two slots per day, 9 to 11 a.m. and uh, 3 to 5 or 3 to 6 p- p.m., no? I go, okay, perfect. Uh, I'll take one slot per day. So two hours of confession and then I will go at FeastCon as an attendee, no? I was so excited for it. I had this perfect vision of my head of how it would go. But you know, God, I always casually say one of his hobbies is yung manira ng plano. Favorite niya yan, eh. Lord, ito yung plano ko for my life. Ang ganda, sirain natin. Sabihin ni Lord. Sirain natin yan. Kasi mas maganda yung gusto kong mangyari. Kasi titibagay niya lahat yon. So, ganun din yung nangyari sa akin. No? Why? Because on the first day, so I went to my confession slot, 9 to 11 a.m. Nata- medyo nag-overtime. Okay lang. Well and good. Tapos. And then they told me, Father, kulang. Kulang ng pari for confession. Can you come back in the afternoon? So I go, sige, meron pa rin naman akong time to do, go to FeastCon and all that. So I came back, no? I sat down at around 4 p.m. because I had a meeting that I can't escape. No? I, have, I sat down around 4 p.m. And sabi ko, by 6 p.m. I can join the plenary, I can join the exposition, and so on. I went out of that confession room at 8.30 p.m. Why? Because that many people were lining up for confession. And dami, dami. Tama yan. You have to cheer for that because that's wonderful. The next day, matalino na si Father. Humana pa ako ng batang pari na kasama. Hinila ko. Hindi ko siya binigyan ng joy. Salika sa mga makaslakin, mag-feastcon tayo. Para marami kami magpukumpisal. So, may nahila ako isa. Pakumpisal. Okay. Um, morning, uh, 11, 11 to 2.30, overtime pa rin, no? Tapos bumalik ako kasi kulang pa rin. Buo ko ng 4 o'clock, bumabas ako ng 6.30. So, in total, I spent around, in the last two days, I spent around 10 hours of confession. I've never done that in my four years of priesthood. <laughs> 10 10 hours. My goodness. And then, nung gabi na lang, kahagabi lang ako nakapag-plenary. So, so yung plano ko, wala na lahat yun, no? So, nag na lahat. And, you know, actually, sabi ko sa sarili ko, yung feast con, parang yun yung gift ko sa sarili ko, 
for my fourth year. Kasi sakto eh, magkasunod lang. Pero yun nga, sabi ni Lord, hindi, iba yung gift ko sa'yo. And my gift for you is to stay in confession for 10 hours. And I love that. Alam niyo, kahapon nga, natawa ko sa sarili ko involuntarily. Kasi may, nagkumpisal kami, no? And then she stood up, and the moment she turned around, away from me, nung di niya na ako nakikita, napagano'n ako. <laughs> With padya ka, ganun. Kasi ang saya ko. Kasi, yung umalis na yon, she hasn't been in confession for 10 years. And for me, that is grace in person. That you see people lining up years without receiving the sacrament of confession and they go there. If that is not proof that God is working here, I don't know what is. And then, you know, and it's all like that. And why am I talking to you about confession? Today we celebrate a grand celebration, a solemnity of Jesus Christ as what? Hindi sa intro ng commentator. What are we celebrating today? Christ the King. Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the heaven and the earth. And usually, when we celebrate that, our mind and our readings point us toward the end. Apocalypse. When God goes down and reclaims everything as part of His kingdom, when heaven and earth will reunite into one, when all of God's values will reign supreme and no more evil will survive. All of it gone. And we believe in that. That at the end, God wins. That at the end, God's kingdom will be here. But the question is, what about now? God's kingdom is sure at the end. But what about now? Is God's kingdom here and now? What do you think? Yes or no? Oh my gosh. What do you think? Is God's kingdom here or not? Yes. And we know, when we talk about God's kingdom, it's not a territory. It's not a fixed set of land that He is trying to claim. When we talk about God's kingdom, it's really God's reign in the hearts of men and women. That God will be supreme ruler of your hearts, of our hearts. And that is why I am so blessed by confession. Because that gives me a front row seat to how God is building up His kingdom in every heart. How faithful God is in building up his kingdom to every heart. I know you will say, but Father, this is feast con. We're all happy here. Okay. But we all know that life isn't perfect. The world isn't perfect. In many ways, the world has scarred us, has hurt us, has destroyed us. The people closest to us have damaged us in ways we don't even know yet. And it has broken us so much. So where is this kingdom? Where Imagine your life. Imagine your life as a structure that is being built. Imagine you're the surveyor and you're looking at your life as this structure. What does it look like? Sometimes we look at it and we think, my life is in ruin. All this time I've spent on this earth and yet it seems I'm getting nowhere. All this time I've been trying to build but it seems that what I'm building isn't enough. Or perhaps that I've built something good before but it doesn't last. 
But then, go on along with me here. As you look at that ruin, you feel a hand on your shoulder tap at you. And you look at it, and it's Jesus Christ in all his kingly glory. And he points you to a sign next to that construction. And it says, work in progress. My dear brothers and sisters, when we ask where the kingdom is is in this world, it's here. But it's still being built up. It's still being constructed. It is still a work in progress. And that pertains to all of us and to every individual. Do you believe that? Can you imagine that God is building something beautiful in your life? That you are God's kingdom. That every single one of you is an essential building block in that kingdom. But the difference is that God knows each building block intimately, perfectly, by name. The thing about being in confession, if I may go back to that, is that when I am there, I feel so blessed because it reminds me of how little of this is my doing. How my ministry is not because of me. Because I can study as much as I want. I can train as much as I want, but I will never be able by my own power to forgive sins. It is purely God's grace and God's power. Being in confession reminds me that I am merely an instrument. And if I am not in God's hands, I am nothing. And if I'm in the wrong hands, I can make things worse. So being in confession reminds me of how little of this I actually do. We, have given, we are given this theme for FeastCon, and that is what? Ano na? Ano na yung ating theme? Greater than, right? But see, when we talk about greater than, it means that something has to decrease, right? And that is, of course, us. But we are afraid of that. Because our fear is that if we allow ourselves to decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease, we will end up with nothing. Di ba, linya yan sa pelikula? Wala na ba akong ititira sa sarili ko? Palaging ganyan sa mga love story, di ba? Di ba dapat magtira ako sa sarili ko? And yet, that is the invitation. And to guarantee to us that it's okay to lessen ourselves, Jesus Christ went ahead and did it himself. He made himself less and less and less and less until on that cross, he emptied everything and gave everything up for us. My dear brothers and sisters, this is our secret power as Catholics, as Christians. Because the world is afraid of being decreased, of being lessened. The world will tell you you have to fight for every square inch, tooth and nail of what you've earned because you deserve it. Deserve ko to. That's what we always say. Never give an inch because they will take a mile if you let them. But life can take away everything anyway. And our secret power is this. That we Catholics, that we Christians, we're not afraid of being lessened. We're not afraid of being decreased. We are not afraid of becoming nothing. Because our Lord transformed nothingness and turned it into 
grace. Our Lord embraced being less and less and less and showed us that that is actually the only way we achieve everything that we want by becoming less. Feasters, you have a special favorite prayer, right? That you pray every feast. What's the first sentence of that? Parang di nyo favorite kung sabihin ninyo. Kunwari favorite ninyo. Pakiulit po yung first sentence. Okay. Today I receive all of God's love for me. When you pray that, what are you thinking? that you will take, receive all the love that God has for me. I will take it all in because it's endless and that's good. But I hope when we, as we celebrate Christ the King and as we celebrate that celebration of God's majesty and lordship with the gospel of Him on the cross, we understand that asking to receive God's love is asking to be lessened. Naku, hindi na namin dadasalin, Father. <laughs> Bano lang, palitan na natin yan, brother. <laughs> brother Bo, can we write a new prayer? <laughs> but that's the point. If you want to receive God's love, what it will do to you is decrease you. It will decrease you. Because if you're following Jesus and all you want to do is get and get and get and all you're experiencing is being enriched and enriched and enriched, something's wrong. Something's not lining up. Because all of you here, I know, can tell me and can tell the Lord with all honesty that by following Him, you are in one way or another being empty. Right? He's asking things from you that you have to give up. I gave up my perfect image of FeastCon, for example, and I spent hours in confession. Okay. He's also asking you and always asking you to receive His love by giving things up. To receive His love and allowing Him to Build more in your life. How? By letting His love make room. By letting His love make space for what is God's. So my dear feasters, the call to us is simple. Decrease. Lesson. Don't be afraid to be decreased to be lessened when God is the one doing it. Because He showed us that He can transform all of that and turn it into grace. Don't be afraid. Let God have it. And watch as He builds up the best life that you can't even imagine right now. But that is His plan. Amen.